Hi, I'm Mark Barseman. In this video, I'll be introducing the definitions of absolute max and absolute min, and we'll do examples in involving identifying them on a given graph of a function. This material is from section 4.5 of the book. Uh, the early pages, uh, pages 296 to 297, and a little bit in the middle of uh, page 299. There are no matching examples in the book, though. Um, the corresponding homework is this collection of five exercises, homework 61. Now, let's start by reviewing some things we discussed in previous videos. Remember that when you have the graph of a function, uh, available, it's easy to notice high and low points. So there's a high point, there's a low point, there is a high point, there's a low point. Those are local extrema. That's not the highest point anywhere on the graph, but it's the highest point nearby. That's not the lowest point anywhere on the graph, but it is the lowest point nearby. That was the idea of a local max and a local min. Uh, the local max is that uh, a y value that's the greatest y value on some nearby interval. And a local min is a y value that's the least y value on some nearby interval. In the current section, we're going to turn our attention to what are called absolute extrema. So an absolute max is a y value that has this property. That y value is greater than or equal to all the y values for all x's in the domain of f. So the y value, f parentheses c, is what's called the absolute max. It happens at the location x equals c, but the absolute max is the y value, f parentheses c. And again, it has the property that that y value is greater than or equal to all other y values, or, or all y values for all x's in the domain. And similarly, for absolute min. An absolute min is a, is a y value on the graph. It's an f of c that has the property that it's the least y value. That is, it's less than or equal to the y values for all x's in the domain. Collectively, we say that an absolute max or an absolute min is an absolute extremum. And in plural, we'd say absolute extrema. So we're just going to do one example. We're going to look at this given graph of a function, and we're going to locate local maxes, local mins, absolute maxes, and absolute mins on different intervals. So for this first row, we're looking at the interval from 6 to 15. So we're looking at that chunk of the graph, including the endpoints. So what are the local maxes? Well. Our definition of local maxes is that they can't occur at endpoints. So the only local max we have is that value, 9. So it's the y value of 9, and it occurs at x equals 8. What about local mins? Well, let's see. That y value is the lowest y value on that whole interval, and it, and it occurs at a point that's not an endpoint. So that's the local, a local min. Now what about absolute maxes, absolute mins? Absolute maxes can, can occur at the endpoints. So notice that that y value is the greatest y value on that whole chunk of the graph. So the absolute max is this y value of 10, and it occurs at x equals 15. So this single symbol, f parentheses 15 equals 10, gives us the value of that max and tells us where it occurs. Uh, absolute min, well, let's see. The lowest point on this whole domain is that one. So the absolute min is f parentheses 12 equals 6. So notice that that number 6 is a local min, and it's also an absolute min. But that number 9 is a local max. It's not an absolute max. And that number 10 is an absolute max, but it's not a local max. Now let's go on and consider this interval. That's the same chunk of the graph, but without the endpoints. So that's the chunk of the graph we're looking at without the endpoints. Well, the local max is still that number 9, which occurs at that point on the graph. And the local min is still this number, which occurs at that point on the graph. 
Now what about the absolute max? It can't be the number 10 because uh, the number 10 is not uh, the y value for any point in this interval. So what other y value could we have? Well, it can't be 9 because there are some points in this part of the graph that are higher than 9. So what would the what would be the, what would the highest y value be? It couldn't be nine and a half because there are some points on the graph that are higher than that. So there is no highest y value in this part of the graph. The, the number 10 is higher than any of the points on this graph, but there is no highest point. So there is no absolute max on that green part of the graph. The absolute min is still that number. It occurs at that point. 12, 6. Now let's consider this interval from 8 to 15. So that's um, not including that point 8, 9, and not including this point 15, 10, but it is including all the points in between. So that chunk of the graph. All right, uh, what about local maxes? Well, that number 9 is, is not a candidate because that's not a point on the graph in this interval. And that number 10 is also not a candidate because that's not a point on the graph in this interval. And besides, local maxes and mins can't occur at endpoints. So there is no local max. There is a local min. Um, there is no absolute max, but there is an absolute min. Now let's consider the graph on this interval from 12 to 15. So we're going to include this point, and we're going to include this point, and we're going to include all the points on the graph in between. All right, first of all, local maxes and local mins. This number 10 can't be a local max because it occurs at an endpoint, and local maxes can't occur at endpoints. And think about the, all the points on the graph that are not in points. There is no highest one. They keep getting closer and closer to y equals 10, but there is no highest one. So if we exclude this endpoint, which we have to do because we're not allowed to have endpoints be the locations for local maxes, then there is no local max. And there's no local min either because this endpoint can't be the location of a local min because local mins can't occur at endpoints. And there is no other uh, point on the graph that qualifies as being the lowest point nearby. Now what about absolute max and absolute min? Well, those are allowed to happen at endpoints. So the absolute max is this y value. The absolute min can happen at an endpoint. So the absolute min is that y value. Let's go on. What about this interval from negative infinity to 4? So that means this chunk of the graph. Notice that there is no uh, highest or lowest point on that graph. So there's no local max, no local min, no absolute max, no absolute min. Finally, let's consider uh, this interval from 4 to infinity. Well, on that interval, there is a local max, that y value of 9. And there is a local min, that y value of 6. But there is no absolute max. There is no highest point on the whole domain because no matter how high you want to go, there's always a point that's going to be higher. So there's no absolute max. And there's no absolute min because there's no lowest point. So you can see that the values of local maxes and mins, in fact, whether or not they even occur, depends on the interval that you look at. And notice that some of the intervals don't have some uh, of those uh, quantities, local maxes or mins or absolute maxes or mins. But there's one important situation where, where some extrema are guaranteed to occur. Look at this interval and this interval. Both of those intervals had both an absolute max and an absolute min. They didn't both have local maxes and local mins. This one did, this one didn't. But they both had absolute max and absolute min. Notice 
Both of those intervals are what are called closed intervals. That observation is articulated in this theorem. It's called the extreme value theorem. If you have a function that's continuous on a closed interval, then it's going to have both an absolute max and an absolute min on that interval. That's going to turn out to be very important in the coming couple of days. Well, that's the end of this example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.